everyone, it's Karen. Uh, thanks for joining me once again. Um, this is part two of my two videos on 15 ways to use stencils. So if you didn't see part one, I hope you'll check that one out. It's got some different ideas in it. Some are more fun than others, but still kind of fun things to do. Um, I think stencils are such a versatile craft tool to use in our card making. They are inexpensive and there are truly a lot of ways to use them. And this is by no means an exhaustive list. But here is idea number eight. You can use your dies as stencils. Um, so in this example, I am die cutting onto the front of my card. It's a beautiful die from Creative Expressions. I'll have everything listed below, guys. Um, so if you're interested, that's where you'll find it. But I'm just, uh, I've taped that card front closed and I'm now just masking off all around that stencil. And you can see I've got some distress oxide inks there and peacock feathers, cracked pistachio and tr uh, twisted citron. And I am just going right over the die cut. So I'm going through to the inside of the card doing this. Um, and I'm sort of holding those leaves down because they did shift a bit. I didn't do a perfect job on this for sure, but it, you get the idea. And then when I peel that off and open it up, you'll see on the inside, it's really, it makes for a really pretty inside of the card. So there you have it. Now I knew I was going to put a white die cut over top. So then just the background part will show through from the front. So in this one, I've already ink blended that background with Cracked Pistachio, Mermaid Lagoon, and the Salvage Patina. And I am using a Cosmic Shimmer uh, Mica Powder. It's very much like Perfect Pearls. This one happens to be in a gold color. And you don't need very much of this. But I'm using my die cut as a stencil. And so I'm just going to tap some of that powder around the outside of all those little flowers and leaves. Um, just going lightly over it. It doesn't take a lot, really. You could probably spray through this, I guess, but I think then I'm not sure about the part that's not stenciled. You'd have to avoid that, I guess. So I did get a bit too much at the bottom where I first started, but it doesn't matter. You can see that shimmer there. It's really, it's really pretty. It's subtle, but there's a pattern that's clearly related to those flowers, so it is quite pretty in real life. So I'm just finishing that one up and there you can see all that shimmer on there. Now to set that, um, I just missed up into the air and sort of wave my card, <laughs> card front through the mist as it's coming down and that will help set the glue in that powder. Now here they are turned into cards. This is the first one. So I've added a few white die cuts to the front. That's the inside you can see through to. And then I used the other floral stencil that comes in that set and uh, Copic colored some of the flowers. I did the same colors on both of these. So this one, I've only used the floral die cut and that happy uh, sentiment. So there you go. A couple of ideas. Now, of course, you can add your pastes, mousse, glitter gels, you name it. Whatever you have there, you can probably add it in. Um, and it works so well. It's such a fun thing to do. But now in this first example, I'm actually going to do this on some acetate. And I'm going to use this Ranger Texture Paste. It comes in a transparent gloss, which is what I'm using for this one. So I've taped my stencil down to my acetate, and I'm just going to spread this on just the same as you would any other paste and spread. Try to get a fairly even application of it. And I'm going to use my Pixie Sparkle Powders, which if you saw the first video, you saw me use them in there. Um, but I thought I'd add them into this. So I'm just tapping them on. They are like Nouveau Shimmer Powders or Brusho. Same thing, they're watercolor powders that when mixed with water will burst into color. So I'm now going to spritz this with, I don't know, three or four mists, I think, of water. You just want to get the powder wet. You don't want rivers of water going under the stencil. But you do want it to activate that powder and I think I added a little powder you can kind of see once you get it wet what you need. So here's the, right, the side I worked on and the magic happens when you flip that over. Look at that sparkle, that shine, it's just, it just glows. So that is a really fun idea for, you know, making a window or, you know, well I turned that into a shaker card, you'll see. Um, and so this is a Decafoil Metallics 
paste that I'm doing on some pattern paper from Craft Consortium. And this stencil is really old. I think it came from Walmart. I think it's a, a wall stencil actually, but it's years old. But any stencil of course will work. Uh, and you just spread this on the same as all the others. And when you peel it off, I thought this one was really, really pretty. I think the combination of that foil or that shiny metallic with the pattern paper was pretty. So here I've die cut one of my dies uh, and I'm going to use that die cut as my stencil again. But I'm doing this on some pattern paper and I'm really trying to use my pattern paper guys. <laughs> you'll, you'll see that in this video. I'm just putting this through that, that stencil that I've made. And the bonus to this is that then that die cut also is covered with that uh, glacier paste and it's really pretty. So I'll have to make a card out of that as well. So I thought that turned out really, really nicely, nice and shiny. And here it is as a card. All I did was add a square frame to the center of that and some flowers and a sentiment. Um, and that was done pretty easy. And here is this one, that's the all to new beautiful day flower. Um, and I've just added a little bit of a square frame to the center of that and a sentiment. And that's, I really like that pattern, that background actually. And here's the shaker I did with the transparent um, acetate. Um, so the acetate I worked on is at the back against the card front. And then there's a clear piece across the top of the front or, or the top of the shaker. Okay, so when I was looking for all my pastes and gels and whatnot, I, I was looking at these Nouveau drops that look really pretty in my room, but I never use them. I just don't use them anymore. So I thought, okay, maybe, maybe I'll try it. So I put the camera on and I, this is me trying this out. Um, and I'm using a, uh, it's a glitter drop actually. It goes on, it's quite wet going on, um, a little more liquidy than some of the pastes, I would say, but it worked. Um, surprisingly, it worked really well. So maybe try those. If you're not using those Nouveau drops anymore, put them to good use with your stencils. So here you'll see that shine that comes with it. It's really, uh, it's really sparkly. <laughs> so there you go. And so since that was so much fun, I did a few more with the this pink glitter gel. I did try the translucent drops and uh, they cracked a bit, but I, I think that could be a really fun look. Um, and I didn't do any cards with them, so I didn't put them in, but these ones, the glitter ones worked really well. So there's that card, just a couple of simple gold frames and a sentiment and a few pearls, and that was done. I just thought the glitter did all the work on this one. And here are the two that I did with this other pink one. That's an Art Impressions um, hedgehog. And this is Art Impressions as well. That's the cow, party till the cows come home. So a couple more ideas. So of course you can add foil and gilding flakes. Um, again, I'm using some pattern paper from Craft Consortium. It's one of the watercolor um, pieces of paper. And I've already put some pixie spray on that stencil to help hold it down. And I am using that Decofoil Transfer Gel um, or paste, I don't know what they call it. There is a new one that comes in that's called Duo. This one is not, this is one of the early ones and you have to run this one through the laminator. The Duo, you do not. You can just run it through your Big Shot or your, your die cutting machine. So when you peel the stencil off, it's quite milky white. And as it dries, it goes translucent like that. So if it is translucent, you know you can, you can use it. I'm using this uh, rainbow shattered glass deco foil from, or, or foil from deco foil, I guess. Um, it's very much in your face, <laughs> that one. Uh, but I've got a couple of shims in my parchment carrier. Um, I find I, I like the pressure on this just to help really make sure it goes through. And then when you pull it off after running it through the laminator, you ha are left with this beautiful foiled background. Okay, so you can also do this with gilding flakes. You just need to have a, a glue that dries tacky. So this scrapbook.com glue dries tacky and so does the Cosmic Shimmer Flake and Glitter Glue. I think Tombow does as well. 
So I'm doing this again on some powdered paper and I'm just using a little makeup sponge and spreading that glue all over those openings where the stencil is. Now guys, I should mention, make sure you wash your stencils right away after putting any kind of paste or glue or whatever on these. Just, you don't want to ruin your stencils. So when I pull this off, you can see that it's a bit milky white in places and you again want that to dry translucent. And now the mess happens. As soon as you open that jar, it's, it's a mess. So you just sprinkle your gilding flakes on. These are from Cosmic Shimmer and I love these because they've got a little bit of red and gold in them, a bit of orange. And as you spread them, it's really quite fun because that you just see the pattern coming out. So that's the way it looks. And here they are as cards. That one I thought was pretty much done already. Um, I made it a sympathy card and just added on those little sequined hearts from a shaker mix. And I die cut this into hexagons and actually some of those hexagons are raised more than others. I put different layers of die cuts underneath them. So there's a bit of uh, texture to that. And I had a little bit of that foiled piece left over. So I did make another card um, and I've just put it as an edge on that side and the background of that card I um, used some Cosmic Shimmer Metallic Gilding Polish I think to, to make that background. I'll list everything. I'll try hard. Okay, you can add embossing powder. So again, pattern paper. <laughs> and I've already stenciled in with my, those inks that you see there. So I'm going over this now with my anti-static powder bag. Uh, and I'm going to place the stencil back over top and I have got it inked or uh, sprayed with that pixie spray so it's sticking down and then I'm just going to run my Versamark ink pad all over that and you want to just make sure you're getting into the openings uh, where all those little stems and leaves are and then I'm going to cover that with some clear embossing powder and I actually did this twice. So I, I am, you know, put the embossing powder on and heat set it and then I did it again. And here it is after the second layer of embossing powder. So it's a bit more raised, which I really thought was pretty. Okay, this is my attempt at doing a masculine card. <laughs> Didn't work out very well, I don't think, but we'll see. These are some stencils from Pink Fresh, uh, the Chevron. And this paper, is from Craft Consortium, it's in the Patina line, and it's very masculine, which is not one I would normally go to pick out, but I thought I'm gonna try this. So I'm putting this uh, Chevron stencil down, and again, ink, inking it up with Versamark ink, and I'm going to use this Ranger Copper ink on it. Um, it, it, it gives it a, it's a pretty color actually on this cardstock, I would have to say. But I wanted something a little bit more than just that. So I put the chevron, the thin stencil back over top and I, I thought I'd have to put the first one back down just so I didn't get ink, but then I realized I could use my pen. So I'm just using my Versamark pen to go over those little tiny lines. And then I can emboss those with this, it's a brown embossing powder that I got in a set off Amazon years ago. I don't even know who made this, um, but it was kind of effective on top of that other one. I thought it was, it turned out pretty well. Okay. The cards, uh, this one, I just turned into a sympathy card. It just had that feel to it. I thought didn't really have to do much more with that. And then here is my masculine card. And my husband said, well, then why is there a frog on there? Well, <laughs> well I don't think a frog's feminine. So that makes it masculine in my books. So adding glitter. That's the next one. So this one can be a little tricky. Um, I'm, I've put some die cut and bond on this cardstock and you really do want to be careful with this that you're not sticking your stencil into that die cut and bond and sealing it there forever. So I'm putting some anti-static powder on the back side of my stencil and then I'm going to just lay it down onto that piece of cardstock. I'm not going to press it at all because I don't want it to stick. So I thought originally I was going to use that stencil that was on the left, the all to new circles, but it didn't work. So I'm just filling in these openings with a bit of glitter. And I'm really not touching that stencil. I just don't want any pressure on it.
so I was just here I'm just going through the openings really not touching any other part and then you want to just get rid of all the excess glitter that's there and then it did come off okay but all that white part is still sticky so I'm putting white glitter over top of that And then you have to press that down. So I just use my bone folder to really press that into the, the die cut and bond. It kind of goes a different color when you do this. So you'll know it's really pressed in. And I just fussy cut that out. And if you watched the first video, you saw this card. So there it is. I've added a few gems and that was it. So another option. Okay, you can use your gel press. Now, I am not very good at the gel press at all. I've barely used mine. Um, I leave it in its container actually and I stick a piece of white cardstock underneath. Here I'm just putting down some peacock feathers, cracked pistachio and some shaded lilac, um, distress oxide inks. And then you want to brayer over that to remove those uh, square lines that you get from the ink pads. And then you put your cardstock over top. Now, I actually did this twice. So when I pull this up, it's actually the second impression. So I've done that twice and you get a much deeper color. And I put the ink that was left on the brayer back on the top, misted it with my water because I kind of wanted to get a bit more of a distressed look out of this. So then I put this back down and it doesn't show up on screen, I don't think, but it did have more of a watery, distressed look to it. And then I've cleaned off my gel press and I went back in with some picked raspberry uh, and I think it was Mermaid Lagoon. It was either Mermaid Lagoon or Salty Ocean. I didn't see what that was there. <laughs> but when you uh, brayer those together, it's going to make a bit of a purple color anyway. So I'm just lightly brayering that. I put my stencil down and then that same piece of uh, printed cardstock or that's already been used I'm pushing into that and you really want to push through the stencil to get the impression and that's what it came out with which I thought was quite pretty now I turned it into a card I have to say I don't like this card <laughs> but I was pretty sick of making cards I think I made 25 cards for this video so I've just stenciled the bottom is just the same stencil that I used Okay, so you can dry emboss your stencils. And for me, with my Big Shot, um, I use plate one, my base plate, a rubber pad, the paper, the stencil, and then my texture plate. And that for me works, but I know this is probably gonna be a little different for everybody, depending on the pressure on your plates and everything else, how old your machine is, how new. So I think you have to play around with this a little bit. You just, you don't want it to be so full that it can't go through the machine, but you want, you know, a bit of pressure so you're gonna get this deeper impression on your cardstock. So here I've put the stencil back and I have colored it now with those inks. And now I've gone back and covered with some Perfect Pearls in mint. And this is what you're left with. It's got quite a pretty shine. And this is the card that I made. I also don't like this card, but <laughs> it's out there for you. Um, so I just die cut that and put some solid color behind. So here's the Pixie Spray. It is so useful, this. It really is a bit of a game changer with stencils, I think. And I keep a little scrub brush uh, with my stencils. So after using those glitter pastes and gels and whatever else, I can clean them off. And this is how I store my stencils. I have two binders and I just divide them by categories. I have typed this up, this is all from this video, but I have that at the front so now I can look at that if I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. And then you can see all the categories there. So sky, there's my cloud edger, um, stencil, water, I have different ones in there. And I do store these with a piece of black cardstock in the page protectors because it's easier to see the stencils then. So there you have it, a bunch of different ways, 15 of them actually, on how to use your stencils. Um, I hope you'll give some of these a try. I hope it's given you guys a little inspiration. Thank you so much for joining me and hopefully I'll have another video some point if I'm not sick of it. And <laughs> 
and I hope you'll come and join me for that. Thank you so much.